What's up, everybody? Uh, we have Ryan here today with me. Yeah. Because I'm scared to do this alone. Hey, why not? So scared. Because we have a very special guest today. Yeah. All right. Someone very important. Let's go. You see, Ryan, I love that intro. And but you know when you have a very important guest on the show, you tend to think that oh, yeah, is that intro too Good long? Or not? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, is it too long? You know, our guest is just sitting right across us. You know, and, keeping and quiet. This, this person, the t- their time is so valuable. You know, it's, yeah. it's so important that you know every second uh, is so valuable to them. You know, exactly. It's like you so know, why, why are we still wasting time talking to each other? Shouldn't we introduce our guest? No, already? I'm very scared to introduce. Can I scared I introduce her wrongly? Ah, we give it away. <laughs> it's <to> her. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have first time on the show today. We have YB Hannah Yo. Thank you. <laughs> <sighs> okay. So actually, right, first things first, I need to ask, you know, a lot of people tend to always call you YB. Yep. Is it okay if we call you Hannah? Yes, you can call me Hannah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Don't need Miss Hannah or No, 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 Mrs. just Hannah. Hannah, Hannah okay. will do, yeah. Yeah, because like, you know, uh, the, the, immediately the first thing will, people will call you like, oh, YB. Yeah. And of course, YB stands for Yang Burhomat. Yeah. Yeah, and but for us it's different. YB stands for young boy. Young <laughs> boy. <laughs> what kind of YB is you looking for? Hey, 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 hey. Actually, yeah. I, I got a very interesting question. So, like, you know, when you guys go to parliament, you know, there's, everyone there is a YB, right? Because they're all, uh, they all members of parliament. Yep. So, when someone says YB, does everyone just turn around and, like, <laughs> yes, are you? <laughs> we, we usually don't call each other YB. But oh, okay. uh, uh, some people always get confused. Actually, for chief ministers mm-hmm. or prime minister, or Deputy Prime Minister, you call them Yang Ahmad Bohomat, yeah, y- YAB. Y-A-B yeah. For the rest of us who are elected, it's just YB. Mm. And then for our spouse or even uh, civil servants, you, they are called Yang Berbahagia. Oh, uh, yeah. that, that or Yang Berusaha for those uh, civil servants. Uh, so so some people people always get mixed up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. And to my mom, I, I am Yang Takguna. <laughs> 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 Hannah, thank you so much for, for coming on the show. I, I know you've been busy this morning. Um, and uh, of course, you were attending to some issues that require your assistance. But the first thing is for that, I have to say one thing. Lah, we miss you in Subang Jaya. <laughs> but of course, not to say that Michelle Ong is not doing a great job. But like how I got to know about you was because of my mom, actually. Uh, my mom's a senior citizen. She goes to a uh, uh, senior citizens club. Yep, in USJ6. Yes, and she always comes back and she tells me about, oh, you know, today uh, we have Hannah Yo visiting us today. And that was that, when I was really young, I was, I was younger. I'm not to say I'm very old. She was, now I was like wondering, oh, who's Hannah Yo? And that's how I got to know about you. Yep. So a lot of teenagers grew up mm-hmm. um, Knowing my name because I have served ten years in Subang yeah. Jaya. Yeah, I was one of them. Oh, yeah. so I studied, that's why I studied I want in to Subang. Know how old are you? <laughs> okay, that's why. We, let's get to this. How old do you think I am? In your twenties. Yes, right down the middle. Oh man, twenty-five. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So I grew up. I was studying in Subang. I went to high school in Subang. So twelve years ago, you would be. Twelve years ago, I'll be thirteen. Uh, yeah, from one. From one. From yeah, one. Which school? CKL. Oh, okay. Uh, I studied in Street KL too, actually. Okay. But that not because... Like a long, be- long time ago. Yeah, but I, actually, I was the... Were f- you in school when I was elected? Mm. No, la. No, la, no, 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 no. I was. That's why I remember it was like a huge thing. Everyone, because all my friends will stay in Subang. Yeah. Actually, fun fact. Um, remember Jillian and Chelsea? Yes, they yes. were my interns. Yes. What? Yes, exactly. Oh, you mean the ones that's building our website? Yep. <gasps> wow, what a small world. Super so, yeah, world. I remember them in uniform and I remember... Their father is a strong supporter of mine. Yeah, yeah. And and that that's when I realized how fast time passed because the first time I met them, it was in Pisa Uno oh, in, in USJ. And yeah. they came in with their father and they were in their school uniform. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the next thing I know, oh, they were interning the with thing, me. Yeah, and, yeah. That was and during that's college. how fast time has passed. Exactly. And it's 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 scary, right? I mean you see them when they're young and now they're coming to intern with you. Yeah. Like I sometimes like for me, okay, for what I do, uh, sometimes it's a bit surreal because sometimes I have, uh, I hire some of my, my staff, right. And then 
little did I know that what if you you know when you hire a staff right the first thing you do the first thing you do is add them on Facebook <laughs> <laughs> number two you follow them on Instagram number three Twitter they don't have because they're younger than you then that, that basically uh, confirms the fact that you're old and you go on Instagram you scroll scroll just to check them out like, see any background check you know we don't do police checks we do background checks here on Instagram and then you see them take a picture with you and then be like eh? and you realize that like like maybe four five years five years ago they were a lot younger and they are actually like you know supporting what you do and now they're working for you and then you be you'll be like oh, the pressure is even more real now I have to make sure that everything is laid out for them and not disappoint them isn't that scary to to basically see that it 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 is uh, but at the same time right you also realize that there is there is so much of room for mm. influence, yep. positive influence. Mm. And so you realize that uh, these young people are really in search of role models. So I'm actually very encouraged when I have very young people follow me on Instagram or even on uh, Twitter mm-hmm. because you know that, you know, it's better that they, they, they are interested because of the nature of my work, politics. Eh? And that's so different from my time. Mm-hmm. So when I was in school, I, I, I think hardly schoolmates of mine mm. followed politics. Yeah. Yeah. And so today, I'm, I'm very encouraged that kids recognise who their elected reps are, even though they don't vote, but they know uh, who their MP and, and their assemblyman mm. is. Yeah, it's funny that you say that though, that, you know, during, you know, when you were in school, your friends did not really pay much attention to politics yep. because I think you and I, we come from the same generation. You know, we both look very young, by the way. Yeah, I, yeah when I was in school, we didn't really pay attention to, to politics. Correct. Because everything was like, we only paid attention to our parents huh, because they were the ones who literally tell us, okay, this is okay, this is not okay, this is okay, this is not okay. And our parents, being Asian parents, always made everything seemed all right for us in, in some way or another. Des- despite all the hardships that they were going through, they will always do it for their kids so that their kids will not suffer. So that's yeah. why maybe like my generation, I'm not sure about yours, that, right? And you, you yeah. are quite different. I think, I think one, one thing that has got to do with that is I honestly think technology has really gotten something to do with that. Because back then when I was in school, right, mm-hmm. it was still like, you know, Twitter was still a new thing. You oh, know, yeah. it, wasn't, it wasn't really there yet, but you know, it was a source of information, you know. Especially when I got towards my senior years in high school, from four, from five, you know, you see a lot more news, t- news on Twitter, yes. you know. And that's how we got to, to keep up with that political scene in a sense. Because, you know, like, like some news outlets are star or whatnot, like, they'll start posting articles and we can like, oh, we'll read it. Because we don't read newspapers anymore. Yeah, and I think now it's even more so because uh, everything now is online, and kids these days, all these kids have phones online, so it's very accessible to them to get all this information about you know what's the current situation in the current political situation in Malaysia. So that's why I think now the younger generation also is starting to get more involved with politics because of that. Just for the record, right? You are in your twenties, you are in your thirties. Yeah, I'm in my forties. Mm-hmm. So when we are talking about social media, for me. Mm-hmm. Largely, my followers are on Facebook, but I know that people in the 20s don't really use Facebook now. Yeah. They use Instagram or Twitter, TikTok. TikTok, or some, some, TikTok. Something TikTok is younger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. TikTok is honestly a lot younger. Yeah, so that's, that's why I find, you know, things just change so quickly. Yeah. Uh, just, just this gap yeah, yeah, exactly. that exists even on this table uh, when we're talking about social media is different from every person. Because it, 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 it rises at such a rapid rate, right? Yep. That it, in the span of like 10 years, it's changed already. You think about newspapers, newspapers have been around since like what? Early 19th century until all the way until now is still around. Yeah, it, it is. really changed. Actually, n- newspapers, it is the legit re- source, source of information. Exactly. And it's been around for hundreds of years. Yeah. But it's like now this technology come in and in like span of 30 years, we got three different platforms for three different generations. And everybody now becomes in a way a newspaper, a news yeah. reporter. I mean, what do you think of that, uh, Hannah? I mean like, yeah, those days I grew up reading The Star mm-hmm. uh, and I remember we would wait for the newspaper to be delivered mm-hmm. outside yeah. our mm-hmm. gate and then we have to catch it before it rains. Oh, yeah, and I got the newspaper <laughs> all wet. Already. Correct. And then you bring it in and then you you spend about one hour just reading. But today, my source of news is really Twitter because I find Twitter, come the news come in at a faster rate yeah. than everything else. Yeah. yeah. And, and, it's, and it's very streamlined also, right? Correct. You can search exactly what are the news you're looking for. So the biggest difference, I think, back then, our time is the lack of information, mm-hmm. the lack of news or sources. But today, this generation has oversupply of news. Uh, so, you know, they have to learn a different skill to yep. digest the news. Yes. They have to differentiate whether it's true or fake. 
but for our time, it's whether or not this is propaganda or not. You know? <laughs> <laughs> because it sounds too good to be true, right? Yeah. 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 That, that's the reason I think because news was so controlled back then. Mm. There was no social media. So one editor or one minister most likely controls the narrative of what goes out. So that's why back then, things were more peaceful. People feel that, you know, it's all good news. Yeah, yeah. You hardly have bad news. But today, because of the, you know, just the platform, everybody can contribute. So you, mm-hmm. you probably get a lot of negative voices or, you know, news coming at mm-hmm. you that you probably don't need. For example, an accident, you know, that can traumatize you for the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like, you know, um, every day you would not go past without day without, you know, having somebody share a photo of their cat being uh, go- gone missing, missing, not gone missing, <laughs> yeah. and then, you know, an accident or something it's like you're getting so much information firsthand. it's like sometimes okay, like, to be honest right if you ask me because I grew up in an era where there was no internet then after there was internet and then I was during that whole phase of the growth of the internet mm. right I kind of realized that things were so much more simpler back then yeah uh, versus now and I kind of missed that that kind of simplicity, right? simplicity like because right now, right, right, everything also you have to, like, oh, yo, I have to, I have to keep up, I have to keep up, I have yeah. to keep up, I have to like, and then, you know, when your friends are doing it, that, that influence is so, that's, it's so strong that you kind of want to get yourself into it as well. Oh, my friend bought this. Oh, I want to buy this. Oh, my friend got that phone. Oh, maybe I want to buy it, you know, and yep. you tend to kind of start to uh, compare yourselves. Yep. And that leads to a lot of, um, what's that word? There's a, there's a lot of dissatisfaction and there's a lot of social Discontentment. Prob- yeah, discontentment as well. Have you ever had any kids come up to you to kind of like talk about these issues before? I don't have, but I have two daughters at home, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, obviously, you know, based on their experience, uh, I then have an an um, opinion or I have an understanding of what goes on in the lives of young children today. Yeah. So today, young kids, when they compare with their friends... My daughter just asked me, Mommy, can you download this app for me? This Because all my friends are on this app. Mm-hmm. I can't remember that, what, what app it is. But compared to my time, peer pressure then was about Barbie doll. Yeah. You know, because they release based on costume. Yeah. Or Polly Pockets. Yeah. So, so the, the, the difference today is everything is online. Uh, and so they have different set of challenges. So talking about childhood, I remember back then there was a toy shop in SS15 Subang Jaya hmm. um, near A1 Chicken A1 Chicken I, sounds so yeah. familiar in, in, near the Rojak place yeah oh, that was okay. many many yeah. many years ago and I remember when Barbie doll just came out all my friends had Barbie doll mm-hmm. uh, one of my neighbours she had a whole collection of all the, all, the, all the costumes and so I asked my father and mm-hmm. I said I would really like a Barbie doll uh, because all my life right at that time every time I do well in uh, school, they would give me books. So like, my aunties <laughs> would buy me books. So I'll, I'll keep getting Peter and Jane books, a uh, different series. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I really wanted a, a toy and I wanted Barbie doll so much. So I remember going to the shop in SS15 mm-hmm. and my, my father looked at the prices, mm-hmm. obviously very expensive because mm-hmm. just released. And so he told me, you know, I can only afford Barbie doll in pajamas. Oh. Yeah. And so I remember my first Barbie doll was a Barbie doll in pajamas. Yeah. And, and, and that that moved me because even though my father was not rich, but he tried his best. You know, you were talking about yeah. our parents tried to make things normal, normalized for us so that, you know, we are not left behind or we are not deprived. And so that, that memory uh, always reminds me that, you know, our parents will, parents will always yeah. try their best yeah. uh, so that our, their children keep up with the rest. And so, today I have to learn to find that balance uh, because if your kids are mixing with a lot of rich kids, yeah. then you also want to make sure that they are not too uh, privileged to the point they cannot relate to the ordinary kids out there. Yeah. And so while I understand the need for apps or you know iPad or, or the latest gadget, I also constantly talk about other children or I show them pictures of other children in other nations who have no food uh, to eat to always put them back, you know, place like, perspective. Um, and, and because I think a lot of our opinions uh, when we are growing up is shaped mm. by our experience. Yeah. So as much as I want to shield and protect them, but I also don't want them to have such a shielded opinion about things, right? That yeah. 
in future decision making becomes very lopsided or they cannot relate to the ordinary folks mm -hmm. yeah so that that to me is my challenge as a politician when i'm drafting policies or making policies i cannot always think about the young person's perspective in subang jaya uh. i oh you know so a person in subang jaya may be co may be complaining about internet speed but <laughs> a young person like in sabah is talking about climbing up a tree, tree yeah. to have access so when you have when you have two different sets of experiences for the person making policy, you always have to make sure that your policy is benefiting majority of people. Mm. And that's why I think it's so important for those of us who are young parents mm -hmm. to expose our children to people of different races, different background, yep. so that they they grow up, you know, they have a more wholesome childhood experience. Because whether you like it or not, your childhood experience uh, experiences or memories really shape who yeah. you are today oh, and how of you course. think. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, well, it's, wow, now that you you said that, you know, when you write policies, you kind of kind of look at both ends of the spectrum. Yeah, I mean, because when you represent a, a, a certain area, there are people aged from zero all the way to like, yeah, but it just, it just made me it's realize that one demographic, you know, yep. it just made me realize that, that, that at, at any time that you make a decision or say something, you're never going to be able to please everybody, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so, isn't that stressful? How do you deal with that? So that's why I think it, politics really about communicating mm -hmm. uh, your policy and helping people to understand and taking people down that journey. I just want to share with you my experience dealing with child marriage. So child marriage was very hot yeah. uh, for us. I, I remember you came to parliament to give uh, the petition on maternity leave, yes. maternity leave, right? Yes. But uh, child marriage is um, quite complex. So before we won the elections, uh, we promised in our manifesto to raise the minimum age from 16 to 18. Yeah. Uh, so anyone below the age of 18 is a child, according mm -hmm. to Malaysian law. Mm -hmm. yep. And so when we started looking at the causes of child marriage, you have poverty, you have the lack of education. Mm -hmm. uh, and then people started trend, trending you know, on social media, hashtag like girls belong to school. Uh, and, and I look at those hashtags and then I look at the reality and so we wanted to look at moving the minimum age 16 to 18 which means then if i want to make a law compulsory for children to mm -hmm. belong in school and not getting married what is the existing law so when we look at existing law compulsory education in malaysia stops at 12. huh oh yeah so oh, our okay. parents in subang jaya would make sure that we sign up for Secondary, secondary school. school. Yeah. But that's SPM not minimum. Correct. Uh. But that's not the reality in different parts of Malaysia. Um. So many people don't know that mm -hmm. when you start a hashtag girls belong in school, yes, but what school are we talking about? So to those who are getting married in yeah. the rural area, they have completed school at the age of twelve and now they are fourteen. Hey, I can get married. Oh. See? So when we then look at compulsory law, it stops at twelve. Mm -hmm. So for me to move the compulsory education from 12 to 17, from UPSR to SPM, mm -hmm. okay, what are the infrastructures that I must put in place before I impose such a law or change mm. such a law? I then have to make sure that in every district, in every rural area, in every place, there is a secondary school available for kids to go to school. Wow. And right? also it has to be able to accommodate the influx of new kids coming in. Uh. Yes. And yeah. also then, if you want to do that, can you do that? Can you build a school in, in one year, in 12 months or in 24 months? Mm -hmm. So you have to prepare and you have to study this. And so we were, we were in that process of studying, making sure that we are ready. So it's not really just about announcing or making a cool yeah. policy. Can, can the rest of Malaysia catch up? And that's our duty. And so you have to find always the middle ground. Yeah. Uh, always trying to be moderate in, in our approach but at the same time explaining. So it takes a lot of explanation to people so that they are not frustrated. They understand that you are working on something. We are going to get there. How long it's going to take, you have to explain that properly to people. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I wouldn't lie though. Every time I see a hashtag trending on Twitter or anything that you know I'm kind of for, I want to see results like immediately. Yeah. 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 It's like, you know, and then, you know, it, like to me, once the hashtag disappears and nothing has been resolved, that thing has failed. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's it's just that mentality because you know in the in the tech era everything comes to you so quick. Plus, yeah. You think mm -hmm. you, you want everything to be resolved quickly. You know what I mean? I mean, but but for me it's it's it's, it's like me like every time I, I see a problem I want to try to resolve it quickly. But then again, 
Wow, I just don't realize how much of a stressful situation you must be in on a daily basis trying to solve problems day after day. Because like, I was going on your website and and I, I see, because you know, on your website, you publish all of the accounts of all, all the different different people that you've you've helped. And it, this is so cool. I was like, I clicked, I clicked on a few years. I mean, randomly clicked on 2019. And you know, you helped a lady uh, because you helped a lot of people. And it's not just only the poor you, you help them buy groceries one of them is labor and, and a lot of things you know yeah. how how many people on average do you get reaching out to you on a daily basis asking so, for assistance so a general rule to all my staff is we don't intervene in private matters yeah. so mm-hmm. if they have a divorce ongoing and they are fighting for their kids you know that is a family matter unless of course there is very severe abuse and the institutions have failed them then we have no choice but to step in and see what can we do for the child. But apart from that, general rule is no private matters. Mm-hmm. We are here to deal with, you know, like the, the society at large, the communities at large. But I always tell my staff, you know, don't be so rigid because to every general rule, there's always an exception. Yeah. And when you are too rigid, then sometimes you miss out on the people that really need your intervention and your help. Mm. And and so you you need a lot of common sense in politics to understand, you know, if these people have tried their best, uh, then I need to step in. If I can do something, I want to help. But then there are also people who don't try at all and then they come and they expect to be spoon-fed and they feel that because I've voted for you, you have to do this for me. Oh, yeah. So there's no general rule. Uh, and so I always look at a situation and I see whether if, not, if I can help, I want to help. Yeah. If I'm in that position, to, to do something for them, I want to try. At least try. Yeah. yeah. So like rewind back to the days when you were still in high school, right? Yeah. And going to college. You know, was it really set in stone? Uh, you told yourself like, you know, when I grow up, I want to be a politician. Or, you know, did it, just, did it just happen naturally? Did you gradually get into it and realize that, okay, you know what? Through this uh, profession or, or, or through this uh, career, I'll, I'll be able to help more people. What got you into that? Yeah, I think it's important for young people when they're talking about direction in life, uh, not to look at failure as a negative thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm very thankful for the failure I have in life leading me down this path. So when I was in school, um, I did very well in school, active as a head prefect, uh, school captain for, you know, Blue House and vice chairman for Leo Club. Mm -hmm. So I was in the process of grabbing certificates. You know, how you, you're told that when you graduate, you have to have a set of certificates. Yeah. Core curriculum is everything so that yeah. when you go for scholarship application or interview, they will be so impressed. So you keep collecting certificates. And then when from four, from five, as the head prefect, you are obviously expected to sign up for the science stream. But Oh, really? Yeah, because the expectation is, you know, head prefect must have straight A's. And, yeah. Yeah. and smart people belong in, in science, science stream, stream, which is such a myth. It, it's, yeah. it's not true. And so even though I dislike science a lot, and mm-hmm. that's, I, I sign up because I have no choice. Uh, and so I, I went on that journey from four, from five. It was such a pain for me. Uh, it was such a struggle to study science for me. And in the end, I got a great one. Uh, you know, that's not good for a head prefect because they expect you to score straight A's. Oh, wow. And so that was then seen as a failure. So for me... But okay, that was seen as a failure through your standards or through like your Even school? for school because oh. they then use that as uh, an example to the prefects to say, you know, don't be like her. Mm, don't be wow. too active uh, until you neglect your studies. So what, what I was chasing for turned out to be a failure for me at that time. And so I'm thankful that that failure in science stream led me to discover what I'm passionate about, words, right. language. And so then when I went to college, I decided hey, I'm not going to do science because of peer pressure. Right. I really want to pursue something that I, I am comfortable in and I can do well in. And so I signed up for law. Mm. So even my option to go into law is not because I'm passionate about law, but by default, because of that failure, it led me to think, okay, what is my strength? How, how can I benefit from my strength? And if my strength is in language or history, yeah. why don't I pursue something that can help me uh, have, a, have a living, decent 
living. Yeah. At the same time, I'll be okay. So when I was in college, I didn't have a lot of expectation on myself. For me, my, the bare minimum is, hey, my father, this is not free anymore. My father is paying for my education. Mm -hmm. Make sure I don't skip class. <laughs> Make sure I pass my SM. Yeah. So that, that became, I have a lesser expectation on myself. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, uh, sometimes we we are kind to other people, but we are so harsh on ourselves. And I've learned, you know, you got to be kind to yourself. And I, yeah. a lot of young people are so harsh on themselves. Yeah. So that journey in law uh, then helped me to discover that that experience in depression, that the failure at that time, mm -hmm. and how I just failed people's expectation of me, peer pressure, and then led me to discover my faith, you know, in, in Christianity. And then that then changed my purpose in life. Mm -hmm. From then onwards, I said, okay, I, I want to be a lawyer daytime, but in my weekends, I want to be a preacher or one day I want to be a full-time preacher mm. for God. And so it took me on a different journey. Mm. So life is like that. As yeah. you go along and as you discover your strength, what you like, what you don't like, it is okay to change your course. It is perfectly okay. So for those young people who are not doing very well in school, you know, don't don't give up on life. Just yeah. because you don't get good results in primary school doesn't mean secondary is going to be bad. If secondary is bad, doesn't mean your college and your uni is going to be bad. Oh, and yeah. even if you don't get a degree, it doesn't mean that it's finished for you. Yeah. yeah. As long as you work hard, I think you apply common sense and uh, you, you, know, you continue to just explore life yeah i I, I, okay. I i totally agree in that because like when i was in um when i was when i was in uh primary school being chinese are uh, right maybe you think that you're damn good at math yeah right? yeah oh chinese are uh, confirm calculative one lah. i failed maths like mad man i tell you it's like i was the example which i didn't really uh when i didn't really appreciate what my teachers doing i was the leading example of how not to, how to fail maths you know what i mean so uh, you know, or stuff like that my mom was a government school teacher as well she was a government servant and then of course you know there was this whole pressure there of because your mom is a government school teacher the teachers will all be like oh you're embarrassing your mom by by performing so bad how can you look you know your mom's a teacher shouldn't she be teaching you at home right yeah they, then they will say like oh education start at home uh, I was really bad at maths when I was in school. But when I went to high school, I, maths was my strongest subject, but accounts was my worst subject. Yeah. Then when I went to, to, to uni, right, to college, accounts, I got distinction. And, and it's so funny that you, that like what you said, like, you know, you, uh, your aim was to go there and pass. You didn't aim high. It's, I relate to it so well because, right, I was so scared uh, with SPM because SPM, and, and for science streams, oh my God, it's just like, like it goes, it comes, like, it's like nostalgia. I was uh, a prefect as well, and uh, my uh, Did my you parents. Prefect? Yeah, I was. Hey, 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 hey! I don't know that. <laughs> yeah. Which prefect? school? Which school? Stella were you? Maris in. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, so um, I was a prefect, and I, st I I was a prefect, and I got into trouble as well. Okay, with the head prefect because the head prefect uh, not doing his duty very well. Uh, he brought a compact disc they call it oh. <laughs> CD to school and I reported the compact disc oh my God. and then they found out it's the head prefect like Hoa, huru hara. imposter someone is <laughs> sus know. and then um, it was number one you had to be in a science stream Yeah, I, I think my PMI results were not, weren't as great and then it's kind of like borderline being qualified to go into a science stream so I can't go to full science so they put me to sub science sub science means you drop biology and then you put a counselor yeah. right yeah. And then, and then you made it. Uh, my mom wanted to take me out of that school, but then they said that, oh, but your son has a potential of being a prefect. And for me, it's like, wow, being a prefect, it's a cool thing because you know, you are, it's a very looked up to thing, la, you know, in school, I'm not sure during your era. And for me, it's like, I wasn't really a very studious, a very smart person in school. You know, like I was very bad at chemistry, physics, uh, math, I was great. English, duh, of course I was great, like, right? If it's bad, then well, gone case. <laughs> uh, Bar summation, not so bad. But you know, I did so bad in Form 5, it's nothing to be proud of. It's like, even, I don't even want to tell people I was a prefect in school because the minute they say you're prefect, they'd be like, wow, you, this one must be smart now. Must be smart now. Oh, what are you doing right now? Oh, I'm studying marketing. Then there'll be, there'll be, there'll be a long pause. Oh, not, not, doctor or accounting or finance or the the the, yeah. the 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 quote unquote smart occupation i think smart is a very subjective term yeah like i like if you're if you're good at science yes you're smart in science but you're dumb in arts yeah. you know i mean if you're good in arts yeah you're smart in arts it's, it's a very subjective thing you know there's there's not one specific definition that that can say oh you're smart or you're dumb you know there are yeah. some things people are good at 
and some things that people are bad at, you know? But and you just got to find out what you're good at and, and yeah. Exactly. And that's when I realized, right, when I went to uh, college, I did a part-time job in events and I did a lot of concerts and that's why I, I was very fascinated with lights and stage presentation, you know? And then this is, and I, I found out that this is event management is a part of marketing and I was like, hey, I want to do this. And while my friends were already like, you know, in their last year in university, going to graduate already, doing their, they are going to study in Australia, uh, their accounting, their finance, their lawyers, the physicists or whatever not. Here I was uh, just starting my degree. So that means I was actually three years behind. And to Asian parents, right? That's a very big disappointment. It's like, hey, what's your son doing? Uh? And then, you know, my mom will be like, he's still studying you know while the rest will be like oh yeah la, my daughter is working for the big four you know a accounting firm in malaysia or in australia and stuff like that so but, but one thing about my mom though she's like don't rush uh because she knew she knew that i was struggling with my studies and her being a teacher i know i'm not i'm not supposed to say this but even my mom would agree to this she said she just isn't too keen with the education system in malaysia she feels that there's a lot of room for improvement uh, because she actually went to Australia and she realized that her ed the education system there fits children a lot better than what it is here. So in, in Australia, there is the reverse pyramid system where you grow older, you learn more. Whereas in Malaysia, it's like the pyramid system. When you start, you learn as much as you can because you have to, it's more of like a hafal kind of thing. You have to, you have to, um, oh yeah, how to say hafal in English? Memorize. Yeah. Memorize. Memorize. It's a memorizing game rather than an understanding yeah. game. Yeah. So that's why she told me in university, is like, you know what? Understand what you are getting yourself into. Choose your course. They wanted me, they wanted me to be an engineer. I wanted to be a pilot. Both also failed. Cannot <laughs> reject. <laughs> so they, my mom told me, it's okay. I just understand what you want. I will support. And I was like, okay. And then, yeah, that's that's how I graduated, I guess. And my mom was so proud of me. I'm like, oh, Actually, okay. I'm, I'm going to be a bit of a critic here of the education system as well. I feel we don't have a very extensive range of education here. It's like I say, it's very rigid. You have to go arts, go science. And even when you're in arts, what's the most art subject in art? Just drawing. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, like being a musician is a professional livelihood, you know? Like what are we doing? We make films for a living. Yeah. You know, where, where do they teach this in school? None. There's no. There's no even like some schools don't even have a curriculum, an extra curriculum, for these kind of vocational training. And I think vocational training is something that's very underlooked in our country. You know, like if you don't get a degree, sorry, you're a failure. No, you're not a failure. If you go and learn from a master master mechanic, dude, you can open a very successful business as a mechanic. This, these are some things that you know I feel like is very overlooked in our society today. Yeah, but this is why I also realize that people our generation mm -hmm. can shape can change the direction for our children. Oh, yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. And that's why I, I, I make sure I always have that conversation with my young daughters. You know, even if you don't like something, it's okay. Mm. Explore different things mm -hmm. and then discover what you're good at and then you do it. So you, if you ask those who are working today, I will tell you the most important thing is your job pays your bills, mm -hmm. number one. Live within your means. Live simple, live within your means. Mm -hmm. And number two, make sure that you are happy getting up to go to work. Yeah. yeah. Because, you know, you can be earning a big salary but yeah. if you are depressed every morning going to work and you don't like the colleagues that you're in the office the work that you're doing then there's no point yeah yeah so you know i rather take a lower income job but you know you you get up excited about work and oh, yeah. you, know, you are happy yeah. yeah so that's very important which a lot of people don't don't teach this when their their kids are in school yeah yeah and I think one also is because like, like you said, like in school when it's so rigid, they don't have that space to explore, you know. Yeah, what they're good at. Exactly, yes. exactly. And this this one, so I, I did, I went, I studied in America for my college. And one reason why I chose that system is because of the way the education system is, uh, I went to ADP in Taylor's, uh, and the way the American system is set up is you are allowed to try everything. Yeah. I have a lot of flexibility in what I wanted to study. I did drama class, I did math class, I did psychology class, just so I can, you know, try and figure out what I like and what I don't like. And this is one reason why I chose that over the A-levels, which a lot of my friends went to. Because A-levels is like, okay, if you're doing science, then you take three science, one, one math or something like that, you know, and it's very, very rigid. There's no space for the exploration. And I think we could use that in our education system. There was something Masli tried to do um, uh, to remove exams from young children mm -hmm. so that they are not put under those pressure mm. and they are able to explore what their gifts are. Yeah. 
every, oh, now, now that you mentioned, right, you don't take away exams for young children. I remember when I did my UPSR, you know how they give you your results, isn't it? It's like they put you in a hall and then they, 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 they put announce you, one by one? They announce one by one. Huh? They'll be like, okay, ini golongan 4A. And then they'll announce all the names. Okay, ini golongan 3A, really? 1B. <laughs> yeah. I and then when they came that. to me, 2A, I think I had 2A, 1B, 1C. La. You know, I had all the alphabets. <laughs> 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 hey, very, collection, collection. Quite scared, you know, because it's like very embarrassing yeah. to walk up to... Yeah. Oh, I'm glad I didn't have that. Mine just like, standard like one table there, you go there, sign your name, they give you a paper. Yeah. As, okay, you as, see who is crying, who is laughing, and then you know who did what. <laughs> yeah. Aspen is different. Aspen, you go there, sign, get a slip, right? Ah, and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But man, I know, talking about all this going back to school already brings back that, that do, kind of do memories. Do you have nightmares of sitting for SPM? Yes. You know, right? After even I graduated, right? Yeah. I had, I tell my mom this, I had nightmares, right? Not graduating. I'll wake up suddenly. Really? Yes. I would, I don't know why I dream about it, but one day I'll just wake up, right? Sweating and everything. And that dream was, I did not get my, my scroll. I failed. And you know, and my parents were very angry at me, and my mom was really, really angry at me. And and sometimes I actually, you know, funnily enough, I still have it until today. Yeah. It, it's it's. I remember when I was young, lah. You know, like my mom. It's again, you know, I like my mom's a teacher. Yeah, you know, yeah. and her friends who are her colleagues, teachers as well, also have children, and they will always be comparing. They'll always be comparing. But you know, like you now, I, I I well, I'm a father now. I have a daughter, right? So you know. <laughs> we were having this conversation with my, my, my wife my wife the other day. She's like, so which school is your daughter going to go to? Are you going to... Then my friends be like, oh, you may make sure you put her in Chinese school, okay? Chinese school, is the foundation is good and stuff like that. And for me, it's like, you know what? Uh, I think we need to put her where... She, well, she's too young to understand. But as long as we feel it's comfortable for her and she's yeah. having a lot of fun... Yeah, I think we'll let her do that. And and and, and, and then Michelle was asking, you know, are you gonna let your daughter become a YouTuber? And I'm like straight away in my mind, I was like, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, I would not reject, but I need to make it very, very clear to her that if she tries it, if she does whatever I'm doing, filmmaking or whatever not, and she doesn't succeed, she has I need to make her understand what reality is. Rather than paint the picture of don't worry, as long as you work hard, you will achieve your dreams. Because let's be let's be real. If you're not good at something, no matter how hard you work, you're not going to get it. And if everybody is just going to complete, uh, continuously paint that picture, like, don't worry, uh, if you don't get it, work harder, work harder, work harder, work harder. You're just not doing that person you know, a favor. A favor. Yeah. You're just leading them down that path, which, you know, it's ne they're never going to have a conclusive cl uh, closure to like, oh, did I succeed or did I not? And they're always going to like, I hate to say this, but I, I have no other way of explaining it. When you... You see, Malaysians are, are very kind people. When you see a person, right, I'm not saying that he's a bad singer, but he goes sing karaoke, right? And then, okay, la, maybe not that great of a singer. La. What are you going to say? Oh, actually, you're not that great of a singer. Stop singing. You, you know, parents will be like, wow, you can sing, huh? Wow, not bad, not bad huh? you know? No matter, like, whether they sing out to you or not, you can always, you always reply with encouragement, encouragement, encouragement. No one, I mean, there will be some people who will eventually go up and say, hey, man, you're not that great and whatever not. Don't you realize that all people always encourage, wow, you're good, no, work harder, do better, no, do every better. Every time I sing karaoke, my friend asks me to stop one. Okay, so. that's your friends <laughs> lah. That's the different thing. But like for me, it's like, I remember when I was going through uh, school and I failed my subjects, my uncles and aunties, never mind. All you have to do is study harder. That's why I tell you, if you want honest opinion, before you're married, you listen to your siblings. Oh. Your siblings will never lie. <laughs> okay. Siblings will always tell the truth. Yeah. Uh, after you're married, listen to your spouse. Because your spouse, even though they can be a very harsh critic, but because they live with you, they know. Yeah. yeah so these are the two people wow. I think pay attention. Don't dismiss whatever they say. Yeah, that's true. It's very true. My brothers give me a lot of shit, but like... <laughs> They're, oh, here, they're here. straight up, uh, they're straight up, uh, they're like, just tell, they just tell me straight up. Uh, I'm also very honest with them. Uh. Have they ever like critiqued any of your films that you made for us? Um, not really though. Not really? Not uh, here's really. a fun fact though. Uh, Julian Yi, who oh. is a national Olympian, yes. is actually Ryan's brother. My younger brother. Oh really? I've yeah. Met, yeah, I've met him before. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the all-star family, you know? I didn't know that. It's, it's so funny. Like uh, I met Julian on the flight back when I was working in, in uh, overseas and I was on the same flight with Julian. He came up to me and said hello. And then, you know, Nick, then after the following week, he came in for an interview, interview. <laughs> but he didn't tell me anything about Julian. And then after that, he's working for me and then all of a sudden he says, oh, Julian says hi. I'm like, who's Julian? Oh, Julian, my brother. He showed me a picture. <gasps> yeah. So yeah, you know, an all-star. Small world. Very an, small world. An all-star family. The Subang, the Subang gang is very small. Yeah. But 
okay, so we've talked about you in school, you know, uh, Hannah, you know, how about how you, uh, you know, uh, failed, you know, t- and you went to university, you decided to take up law. And then like when you came out, I'm, I'm pretty sure, you know, you had sort of like, a, okay, I'm going to come out, I'm going to work for a good law firm and then, you know, help people. How did you do it, dabble into being a politician all of a sudden? Yeah, so I did law for three years and mm-hmm. remember I wanted to be a preacher. So yeah. in, at night, I went for ministry training school, mm-hmm. uh, how to minister to people who are broken, depression, healing and all that. And then after three years in law, I prayed about the direction uh, that I supposed to take and I went into event management. So mm. I did two years of event management. Oh wow. I handle a lot of contest man- management. So shop with your credit card, this credit card and then come and redeem a free toy. Right. And so my job was doing that, managing that in, in shopping malls. Mm-hmm. So I did that for two years and then I joined politics because I wanted to support my schoolmate ah. who say he has a calling in politics. And so I just signed up to support Edward, also a Subang Jaya boy. Mm-hmm. And after that, um, when election was called, I was asked to run for my hometown, Subang Jaya. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I gave it a try and then the rest is history. So that's how yeah. I got involved in politics. So looking back, right, I never once in school days decided, okay, I'm going to be a politician. Yeah. I mean, I read about politician uh, and I thought, oh, that must be nice, becoming a VIP, launching event. But I never thought that, you know, I, mm. I, I'm going to take this road. Yeah. But listening to your background, I feel like even though you never intended it, somehow you kind of accumulated like the skill set required, you know, because you did law, which 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 really help in, you know, how you think about uh, policy making. You did your, minis- uh, your, your yeah. minister course, which really taught you how to be more empathetic, how to deal with the human nature of things. And I really feel like these are like, like somehow you just uh, managed to get all those skill set, uh, the event management, how to that's, organize that, things. That's you why know? I don't believe in any wasted seasons in, yeah. in our life. Yeah. Experiences You, you help. never know. Yeah. So for the young people out there, I think the, the best thing is to take up more jobs to mm. understand, uh, to have a feel. Then you realize, oh, you know, actually I'll, I, I'm really good at this and I want to open a restaurant or yes. I'm good at cooking, I want to do this. So, there's no harm trying. Yeah, just try and then discover what you're good at. Yeah, I read this online before. They say, you know, in your first few years, when you first come out of work, work for a good boss. Learn all you can and then you just move on to another. You accumulate. It's still learning. Yeah. And then it's, and, and like, there's no, um, there's no rush in trying to like you know claim your riches and, and, and whatever not sometimes there are some people who are like for, in their 40s or in their 50s who are still learning new things yep. and you know life is never ending you continuously learn unless, learning never stops unless of course you know you, you, you strike a jackpot and you're a multi-millionaire and you don't care but then again millionaires also still learn you know yeah. which wife to choose which one to trust <laughs> <laughs> and stuff but now you, you so you have you have uh, you have two 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 children two daughters, two daughters yeah. all right and how old are they seven and nine seven and nine are they old enough to understand you know the the kind of things that you you are doing for a living I always try to explain to them uh, and I you know as a working mother yep. it's important to bond and and to connect and so and when you connect you cannot be superficial so yes. I always try to make it real for them and, and I'll make sure that you know if I have time I put them in bed but I always try to explain to them how bad my day is or what I've done mm. uh, so you know today I, I, I had to deal with a case the child died because the child oh. was abused mm. or you know so that, then they understand the reality out there is not the same for every child and so then they become more grateful for what they have. They don't take things for granted. Right. Uh, so it's important to actually have those kind of conversations. So I don't shield mm. this away from them. Uh, so I, I, I try to tell them uh, how bad it is. For example, like during the MCO, I yep. to go out and distribute food for some families. Yeah. Yeah. So when they are complaining why they are eating chicken every day, you know, and I have to remind them, you know, some, some families really, they'll even have they rice only have eggs. Yeah as a source of protein, yeah. you know? So, so they, they, they need to be in touch with what other people are going through. Yeah, yeah. That, that's so important. Yeah. It's I like mean, a little reality check. Uh, like we don't, we're not just living in our own bubble. Yes. You know? yes. It's, it's a lot more in the society that's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like, you know, I'm sure you chill. Like, okay. For, to be honest, like in a few years, my daughter also will be able to find whatever she needs to find about her father online. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not sure she, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not sure whether she wants to see some of the pictures yeah. that you, they'll be able to find because, you know, I've done some crazy things. But, you know, you, your, your children will be able to see those things as well. And yes. how do they come up to you and ask you questions? Oh, they have. You know, I did the podcast with uh, Brendan yeah. and uh, I spoke about my days uh, drinking, yeah. uh, getting drunk, <laughs> oh, it, it, man. It, clubbing. And so 
my daughters have started asking, they ask the father, you know, have you tried smoking before? And so mm-hmm. the father had to be very honest. Yes, I, I tried that. I didn't like it. And so then they say, oh, so you smoke? And then mommy drank. And so oh, no. for them, it's like, how can uh, one pastor, in a, you know, one, one uh, a politician. Mm-hmm. So we have to explain to them that we are very ordinary mm-hmm. people and like many young people, we have also made mistakes yeah. before. So have those honest conversations with kids. I think it's important to shield them, but at the same time, you need to have honest, very confronting conversations with them so that they actually have a, a reality check you know, of who their parents are. Yeah. Sometimes we want to put up this perfect front. Uh, and yeah. then, you know, they Google and then they can read everything about yeah. you. So <laughs> it's better to be honest with our kids. Actually, it's true. You know, my mom right, will always tell me not to do something. right. When you ask her why, she won't explain it. She'll just say, just don't do it. I think the difference between my mom's generation and our generation now is like, we are able, we, we have no, I won't say whether we have, I don't say we have no choice. Uh. But okay, like, so you know what? Given the information overload online, right, we kind of have no choice but to really yeah. explain yes. Yes. everything into detail before they draw their own conclusions because yeah. of the overload of information that you get yeah. online. Yes. Oh, that's so scary. Uh, yeah, I talk about this. Uh, I think of my daughter already. Uh, I, I'm quite scared. <laughs> uh, yo. You know, she started forming sentences and not and, and, and it's not because, I mean, yeah, yeah we, we, we teach her. But every day she says a new word and then we realize like, where did you learn this from? You know what I mean? They're like sponges, you know. Yeah. They really like, just absorb everything. You know? So normally she calls uh, my wife, mommy. And then all of a sudden one day she called her mama. Mama, like mama, like that, you know. And then we're like wondering, how, where did you learn how to say that? And we realized she watched, uh, you know, Ping Fong. Oh. <laughs> and the dinosaur, like, where's my mama? Oh, okay. Yeah. And then like, you know, a lot of things like the ice cream, everything. Like, she learned how to make an ice cream because she was watching a YouTube video. Yeah. My daughter is starting to talk like, you know, meh. Le. So I asked, and then I caught her watching Auntie Xiao. Oh. <laughs> so I've not watched Auntie Xiao before, but I've heard of her. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> My youngest daughter is watching Auntie Xiao. Oh, wow. So I said, hey, I, I, got to, I got to find out what content is this. Uh, mm-hmm. But you know, it's true. Based on their conversation, what they're saying, you can almost conclude what they have been watching. Yeah. 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 At, well, I, I mean, I hope so. And Jen, I'm going to send this episode to So I'm Jen. It's like, hey, uh, <laughs> Hannah's children are watching you and you better be careful. Huh? Yeah. Have you, have you watched So and Jen's content? No, not she's, yet. She's, she's amazing. Uh, I think uh, she's, uh, she's a very good example of, um, like she's a, good, she's a girl, go-getter. She's a girl. Po- I mean, like when, okay, she represents girl power. Because uh, in this industry, sometimes, right, girls are always being labeled as, oh, they look pretty, sing, yeah. look pretty, dress sexy you'll make it in this industry. They're always being termed influencers, especially. Oh, how to be an influencer, dress sexy. You know what I mean? We've been, this industry has been labeled like that, but she is a content creator uh, that has basically uh, addressed a lot of issues, you know? Just like, uh, like, like breast cancer, bullying yeah. and stuff like that. She has done a lot of these things through her films. And same thing like what I did too, or what we did, we have addressed a lot of like, our style of videos, right? Uh, at the end of the day, when you watch our videos, there's always a moral uh, there's a moral at the end of the story. It has to have an ending. And that's what I always believe in. It's like, you know, you can make this really slapstick comedy or make it really sad, like what drama, like make people cry. But at the end of the film, you must have, you must, somebody must, uh, well, the person must, uh, watching must take away something from this particular film. And that's, that's what I, that's what, that's what I believe in. Uh, and uh, that's what Ryan has also, you know, has made amazing films, you know, to tell amazing stories to people. Okay, only la. Okay, okay yeah. <laughs> yeah. You watch it, then you decide for yourself. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But have you ever, like, at, w- at any point, like, uh, wondered, have anybody, okay, like, I'm going to ask you this question. I'm pretty sure some people have asked you as well. How long are you going to continue doing whatever you're doing today? Or, you know, what is that, benchmark where all right until i reach this and go i'm not gonna stop i actually don't know uh i think for me every election and that's three to five years right minimum yeah, mm-hmm. three years maximum five years i always of course the first person i always go to to pray uh, i ask god do you want me to continue another term right um pray for direction of course I have the discussion with my husband right uh, so far i have not heard the word stop right but a day may come when I hear stop and then I, I will have to stop because I think politics, you cannot overstay. Uh, you, people need fresh ideas yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you are only um, as good as when you're needed by the people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So if the people decide not to have you anymore, then you know it's time, it's time to go. Yeah. So I don't really have a, a target 
but I will just continue to surf until I hear the word stop and mm-hmm. then and venture into some, something else. Right. Yeah. If it wasn't politics, I mean, you, yeah, I know law, but you know, if it wasn't politics, what else would you be venturing into apart from law? Have you, is, it, is there ever that something, like for me, I always wanted to be a pilot. Yeah, you yeah. still want to be a pilot. Yeah, I still, I still really still want to be a pilot. <laughs> Hopefully Tony Fernandez is listening to this. Hey, I give you free training. Come kind of, is there anything that, that you've ever, ever like? News reading. I, oh, really? I really, really want to be a newscaster. Oh. I wanted to at the time. Because those days, you know, your source of news is TV3. Yeah. Yeah. So you, I grew up with Wan Zaleha Razi. Raymond Go. I'm sure as well. you don't know who they are, right? No. <laughs> yeah. Do you know Raymond Go? No, Raymond I don't watch Go, news. Um, I watched Cartoon Network when I was young. Kel- oh, yeah. Kelvin Ong. Yeah. 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 So. Hey, Raymond Goh is very looked up to, you know, because uh, he's like got this really like- Deep voice. Deep voice. Oh, and then okay. he's got this very sharp razor. I mean, the very chiseled chin. Yeah. Hello, my name is Raymond Goh. And today's news, and we'd be like, whoa. Oh, like this is on TV, not radio. Yeah, it's, it's on, on TV. TV uh. We watch the TV and then we look at not just, we, we don't focus just on the, the, the news. We focus on what they're wearing, how their hair is yeah. yeah. in place. Yeah. And how they talk, how they look at the camera. Yes. If they're looking camera right, right, they'll, they'll just turn their head in slow motion. And in today's weather news, and then cut to the other <laughs> camera. <right there>. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Hey, last time we got no YouTube one. Okay, we yeah. watched eighty. What bulletin no time eight o'clock. So it's quite nice to watch one. Uh, oh, I always remember that because like then you got the countdown. The clock will count down seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Then yeah. the news will start. Yeah, seven o'clock will be Doraemon. Now yeah. after that, seven eleven will be a break for uh, for the 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 azan. Then after back to Doraemon again. Now after that, seven thirty to something it'll be uh, uh friends, and then you will watch the news. And after that, my parents won't let me watch anymore because oh after nine o'clock, not for kids. And I'm <laughs> like mm, okay. And also those days, uh, we didn't have smartphones, right? Yeah. So- you depend on one house phone and yeah. whoever calls you, your parents will know yeah, uh, yeah. how long you talk on the phone and people cannot call in and then you get scolding. So those days, just sitting by the stairs and talking on the phone. For, oh my gosh. Yeah, I was a little bit days? later. I, I got I got like the, not smartphone, lah, but you know, like the prepaid, prepaid SIM card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then my mom, and then I was like, finish up my credit. Then I'm like, oh shit, I need to ask my mom for more money for credit. <laughs> how to ask? I was like, no, my friend, you call me. I don't call you. You call me, use your credit. Yeah, my mom would know all all the girls, okay, like, there's not that many girls to begin with, maybe one or two, who calls the house and asks for me. Yeah. And then I was like, I was so scared because every time when they call, right, they would say, hey, uh, hi, can I speak to Jin? It's like, uh, who's this speaking? Friend. Friend no name one. Ah. <laughs> 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 and then after that, I started calling out because, you know, okay, you know what? I don't want you to you know, go through that firewall. The firewall is my mother. La. So after that, my phone bill started going higher. I remember that man sitting in the staircase. The phone bills will reveal the phone number. Yes. yes. yes and I then my mom will dial the number, you know. <laughs> and then the other side, the mother will, the other side is either the father or mother will pick up. Hi, whose household is this? Yeah. You are who? Mr. Ong. Ah. Oh, sorry. How, who are your kids? Ah? ah, okay. So apparently my son has been talking like this yeah. and then they will both plot, plot a, 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 a plan to like, you know, to forbid us from talking to each other. And then she, my mom will sit me in the corner and say, Jin, you are too young to have a girlfriend. Study first. When you make a lot of money, all the girls will come running. And I'm like, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, like, you know, I came out the world. I made the money. No girls came running. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember like if I walked to my living room and I see my mom holding a phone, I'm like, oh no, I can not ID. Yeah. I know. I remember. Man, a piece of paper, so powerful. <laughs> yeah. I remember I, I made my mom really angry before just because of the phone bills. Yeah. I remember I, I raked up my phone bills right up to $700 once. Ooh. And I didn't understand how... You see, again, uh, it goes back to the the whole idea of my mom makes it look like everything's okay. We have a house. She's putting me to uh, a private school. And, you know, and uh, whatever I want to eat, she buys. But certain things are like toys and everything she won't buy because she says, oh, I cannot afford. But, you know, she makes everything seem okay until the phone bills show up. Yeah. And then when I got my first... I got my first handphone when I was like, 18 years old. How, how old were you when you got your first mobile phone? I cannot remember, but I think it was uh, those colorful uh, Nokia phones. Yeah, the Nokia. <laughs> yeah. The one ones, yeah. can play Snake, you know, the three oh, trees. Snake and Leather. Yeah, Snake and yeah. Leather, yeah. Tetris. Yes, Tetris. I can play Tetris, yeah. Tetris, and then the 3310. I got, one, oh. I got the one that can play the bouncing ball. Man. What? The color, Dian. Oh, you privileged There's, child. You know, it's the generational gap. Right? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the generational gap. Yeah. And Ryan, mind you, like last time the house phone, right, will be very strategic one, okay? It will be at a place where everyone, everyone can, can see, see you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Everybody knows how long you've been on the phone. Yeah. And until now, so uh, my mother-in-law's house, the phone is still at a place where everybody can see. But then again, the person that spends the most time now on the phone is my mother-in-law. Do you guys still use house phone? Do you guys still use house phone at home? No. No, right? Yeah. Like, I, I can't remember the sound of my house phone already, you know? Yeah, but- 
because it's it hasn't it hasn't rang in like what like almost ten years. Yeah, it, it right. yeah. It, now it's only there because die. you know you have an internet, you have an internet connection, and they just give you one one landline for it, ma. Yeah. yeah. But you know, today we are so dependent on WhatsApp. We don't know how life will be without WhatsApp. How to work without yeah. WhatsApp, right? But yeah, I don't know how people survive last time. I, I, do you? Okay. I'm amazed how people can work without a laptop last time. Oh yeah, yeah. I I can't imagine because I when I I studied when I went to college, I already had like we already using laptops and all. Yeah. And then my mom was telling me like how back then they had to bring typewriter. Huh? To, yeah. They 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 we buy laptops to go to college. They had to buy typewriters to type their assignments. Oh my gosh. Legit. That's how they did it. Oh wow. I was like, oh damn. And imagine like she did engineering as well, and their coding had to be typed out huh? manually. And they had to send it to a supercomputer, which is the size of a room, and have to wait one one day for their results to get back. Wow. And then only they see whether the code works or not. That's crazy. I'm but like, there are pros crazy. and cons. Like, I think those day people, when they lock out at five o'clock, they, si- they, they clock out from the office, they yeah. actually don't bring work home because- yes. Yeah, it's just there. Yeah, here, Saturday, Sunday, you're on WhatsApp, your bosses or- And you got no excuse not to see because it's all accessible on your phone. Yeah. People know when you have read the message yeah. or not, yeah. Yeah, true. So, so do, you, do, you, okay, do your daughters have mobile phones? No. They don't. Oh, okay. So yeah. when, when will they get like their first mobile phone? I don't know. Uh, this kind of issues, I'll just let my husband say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I won't lie. This is not something to be proud of. My daughter already has her own phone. Oh, man. I mean, not to call, uh, but to, to, to watch, watch YouTube. Uh. It, only, it only comes out when, when it's an emergency, when, you know, both the parents need to do something at work. And then, you know, we, when we're working at home and we need some time to go to a meeting, then we put that phone there. She's like, Kazel's phone. I'm like, okay, cool. Now she's late. She knows how to call it Kazel's phone. Wow. Yeah. But yeah, it's a, it's a, it's, it's amazing to, to kind of hear your story and how, how you got into what you're doing today. And I, I hope it's, I mean, you've been doing it for quite a while now. Do you 12, t- yes. 12 years. And you know, it's, it's, has it been something very fulfilling to you? Sometimes, uh, I think when you are able to influence policy making mm-hmm. and, um, and also serve people who really need help, uh, it is fulfilling, uh, but at the same time, I mean, people always look at the glamorous side of politics. Oh, you know, people yeah. people call you YB and all that, but they don't realize that for you to be doing this for 12 years, like my weekends are not my own and mm-hmm. living out of a calendar, yeah. schedule programs can sometimes be very draining and you feel that, uh, I just don't know. For like those days when it's raining, I enjoyed the rain. Like I was just thinking, right? What is a luxury? Like those days for us, it's uh, when it's raining outside, mm-hmm. you are in an air-conditioned room, mm-hmm. you are covered by your blanket mm-hmm. and you are listening to Boys to Men. <laughs> and I think that to me, it was yeah. luxury, you know, yeah. just listening to mm-hmm. s- the, the noise of, the sound of rain and, and your music. But today when it's raining, I'm all stressed out. Okay, which area is going to be flooded? Oh. If, it's, if it's more than 30 yeah. minutes, you know, uh, what's going to happen? Yeah. Trees are falling. And so th- I, I don't want to, I, I don't know if I want to be like this long term. Right. Uh, because it's very, very stressful. And so sometimes you do think, you know, if uh, life is not like that, uh, maybe I can enjoy the sound of, Rain, rain again, uh, yeah. again. Uh, but uh, as long as I'm still needed now I want to make sure that when it's raining I, I can help those houses who are flooded people yeah. like they don't, don't have the luxury don't have the experience mm. that we, we want and so for as long as I'm needed now uh, I'm, I'm, I'm there I better work and, and make sure I do my best right and actually that's, that's something I wanted to ask you okay so in, 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 in your line of work and whatever you're doing and you know you have so many people reaching out to you and with the online world everything is so transparent you know there tend to be a lot of negativity sometimes you know there's a lot of negative things that are thrown towards you how do you handle all this type of negativity? You know, when you first got these type of things, was it very overwhelming for you? Oh, very overwhelming. I remember the first term, every email that came in, people say, no, I'm not going to vote for you anymore. That mm-hmm. affected me a lot. But then I think you will, we, we will mature and we'll grow up and then you learn that the online world can be very different. Uh, and, and so don't, while it's important to read the feedback, but at the same time, uh, know your limits you know that you put in the hard work and this is the best you can then maybe learn to communicate better so that people understand but at the end of the day you're still not going to satisfy everybody and and so I think I've learned over the years uh, not to take things so seriously mm-hmm. uh, especially online comments uh, yeah. don't take it to the point that it cripples you that you are unable to function 
Yeah, and, and that's something I understand is, is a reality out there, the challenge for the young people today. Yes, exactly. Cyberbullying, you know, this this is a reality for them. And so for us, I think parents always like find the, like learn that, find, learn to find that balance for your children. Speak on honestly to them, but at the same time also help them to deal with comments that don't, people don't agree with them or people have a different opinion. How, how do you learn to disagree? Yeah. yeah. We got to teach that because because the 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 reason why I asked that is because like these these days you know the the most serious form of abuse is not like you know physical abuse is silent abuse yeah. online yeah. and it's and it's affecting a lot of uh, a lot of teenagers girls especially uh, you know that causes a very uh, insecurity issues and stuff like that and and it, it causes a lot of things you know some people go into depression some people compare themselves some you know I, and uh, sometimes even suicide yeah. I won't lie you know and and the thing is the reason why I asked that is just to, just to kind of give people the perspe- perspective of like even though you're working as a politician a lot of people tend to always assume that you have that luxury lifestyle I mean you are also human and you go through the same thing yeah and you know the struggles that you get, or you you the way you you overcome all these things are completely the same as any individual listening, or going through this as well. And and, and you need, this needs to be basically told to everyone that hey, you know what, this is normal, but it's not something that you should basically be too caught up about because a lot a lot of people when especially when they read comments about themselves, they're not gonna talk to anyone about it. Yeah, so I think there's one thing that's lacking in Malaysia is we talk a lot about excelling. Uh, you know, our education system drives everybody to excel, but we hardly teach people how to survive. Mm-hmm. I think survivor skills are very, very important for yeah. our people. Mm, right. Yeah, so I think more and more now, you know, if young people you you have content, you know, teach people how to survive. That's why I think it's important to if we teach our kids how to be street smart. They will survive, you know. Yes. E- even though they have less money, but they will be able to survive. Yeah, they can fend for their own. Yes, uh, yes. So teach your the younger ones how to survive. That's uh that's actually a very good piece of advice. Survival yeah. skills. Because uh, uh, parents has always protected us. They've never taught us how to survive, right? They they tell you how important it is to excel, yes. but you don't deal with. Okay, when you fail, what do you do? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I've had always friends like that one that this is the only option yes. kind of thing, yes. you know. Yeah, I've had friends who were top A students, are uh, like number one, you know, in the whole school. I mean, like, hey, man, it's every parent's dream to have a child like that, and they're going through depression. Yeah, and you know, uh, I'll be honest, some of them are not even earning as much as what people perceive them to be. Yeah. Like, you know, you're an A one student, this and that, this and that, you'll be earning five figures. I know some of them are not. Some of them lost their jobs during this MCO as well. I mean, some of them reached out to me. La. I mean, friends and friends. We, we, you know, at MCO, we tend to let... For some reason, MCO, we started connecting with a lot of people that we kind of drifted apart from yeah. Yeah. and just to catch up and see how they're doing. And, you know, it just like... It, then it just like makes me sit down in the corner. And it's like, wow, I remember I, when I was told that I was not good enough, mm-hmm. you know? And these people were the ones who were great. And these are the ones that these were the ones that you want to be, right? And they're going through something even worse than what you're going through. And for me, it's like I just sat down and I counted my blessings and I, oh my goodness, I was like, how? I I I actually I remember even sitting this in MCO and questioning myself: Am I even worthy to be going through whatever I'm going through right now? It made me think that you know. So no, but like I mean, it's something that you built for yourself. Like you said, um, success is measured in a lot of different ways. Like, yeah. And what what you do in high school does not always you know, predict your future. Mm-hmm. It does inform somewhat, you know, like in terms of what skill sets you attain, but it doesn't always predict like what's going to come out of it. Uh. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, well. Okay. Wow. We talked a lot about high school. Yeah, man. <laughs> Hannah, I, I, know, I know you're really pressed for time, but before we actually end this session, you know, is there anything you want to say to our listeners listening? Any piece of advice? My advice, I think, is to live your life backward. So, mm-hmm. I, I always think, you know, okay, what, what sets me apart maybe from some of my other friends, I think it's my ability to dream. So I, I dream a lot. I daydream. Mm-hmm. So I can, be at a, I, I can be at a meeting, but my mind can be thinking about some other things. That's not necessarily a good thing, but it's not a bad that, thing yeah. also. So I, I daydream a lot of how things can be different, right? C- different scenarios, different responses. And so for me, I, I, when, whenever I attend a funeral, 
my most important section of the funeral is to listen to the eulogies, mm. yeah. how they pay tribute, how this person has lived their life. So I always learn from those eulogies and I always imagine, so I live my life backward. So I always imagine my funeral. Mm -hmm. How will my funeral look like? What are my friends or my family members going to say? Yeah. So I never want to live through my funeral hearing my daughter say, actually, I didn't Ooh. really know mom. Mm. Oh. I was too busy for me. Mm. Okay. Or mom did this or mom didn't do this for yeah. me. And so I leave it backward. I make sure that I, I, I don't hear them say that at my funeral. This is how I'm going to spend time with them. This is how I'm going to, you know, help them have that kind of yeah. memories and experience. And what kind of friend I want to be, you know, I, I hope that at my funeral, my friends will say, you know, even though she was really busy, she always made time to read my WhatsApp or return my call. And that is the kind of friend I want to be or, you know, what kind of wife I, I, I was to my husband. Mm -hmm. And so leave your life backward because I think we are all in control. We, I mean, we have no control of when we die, mm -hmm. but we have a control of the process from now till that day. Okay. Yeah. How we're gonna Very live true. out, how we're gonna chart that out and how can we respond better to those around us. Yeah. Wow. wow. Oh, that's very interesting. So that's how I live my life. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I, think, I think that's something I'm going to adopt. Oh, really? Yeah. I think that's very good advice. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, Hannah, thank you so much for taking time for, uh, to come on the show today. Thank we you. We are really, really honored to have you here, yeah. to be honest. It's, it's, it's <laughs> most welcome. Yeah. yeah it's like when I told her, hey, we, we're getting uh, YB Hannah, you know, the show is like, what? What? <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> what time? I'm coming. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, um, uh, for those of you listening, thank you very much for tuning in. We hope you have taken some, uh, taken away something from today's conversation. And uh, what, what are you going to be working on next, Hannah? You know, anything that you're currently working on? I, 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 I it's hard to plan now because of you know the possibility of another lockdown. We yeah. don't know. But for me, I just really want to make sure that we are all safe by the Christmas time, yeah. Yeah. so that people can actually have a holiday time with their family yeah. and friends yeah. and not in the lockdown that's the most important thing be with family at this time stay safe guys stay yes. safe stay safe follow <laughs> SOP please Kita yes. Kita. anyways thank you so much for listening everybody remember you can stream us on Spotify you can stream us on uh, Apple Podcasts as well you watch us on YouTube yeah if you want to see our beautiful faces yeah. which uh, yes we have a very special guest so watch us, watch us on YouTube again yeah. give us that extra view uh, follow us on our socials it's at Mamak Sessions at youtube.com slash JennyBoyTV just subscribe there and we'll keep you guys posted on the next session. Thank you so much. And we'll speak to you guys next time.